If yours is deep in there, I'll oh, forget it. It's Olivia and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. Each week I make videos about females on the autism spectrum to try to bring awareness to us. So if that interests you, make sure you like and subscribe. If you are new here, I don't usually look like this, but I'm kind of getting a new special interest in 50s hair and cars. And so this is my third attempt at trying to make some vintage waves. It's still not really quite right, but this is the best attempt so far. You should just see my hair yesterday. Oh my gosh. It was pretty funny though. <laughs> so for this week's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 autistic traits that I don't have. The point of this video and going over these 10 traits that I actually don't have but are considered to be traits of autism is to show you that just because you don't have exactly my traits that doesn't mean you're not autistic. Now of course it goes the reverse way as well just because you have some of my traits doesn't automatically mean you are autistic. The only person that can really officially diagnose you as autistic is a professional doctor, psychologist, uh, psychiatrist, therapist, things like that. So obviously I'm not a doctor, so don't take my word for it, but I just want to show you that every autistic person is different. So we all have different traits and no, nobody, no autistic person can have every single autistic trait. So if you're feeling like, well, I kind of think I may be autistic, but I don't have X, Y, and Z traits, that doesn't mean you're not autistic. When I was first suspecting that I might be autistic and I was looking at other YouTube videos about autistic traits in girls, I didn't have some of them and that made me doubt what my gut was telling me. So I want to make this video to hopefully make you not doubt yourself if you really think that you could be autistic. Some of the traits I'm going to go over may sound stereotypical and they definitely can be, but that doesn't mean they're not actual traits that real autistic people actually have. Two more things before I jump into this video is one, I'm going to do an upcoming video as a Q&A with my mom raising me. So if you're a parent and you have questions for my mom, please leave them down below or email me and she'll be happy to answer them in this upcoming video. The second thing is that I'm thinking about starting coaching and written courses on how to better live with autism, whether it be raising autism, working with autism, how to start your own business while autistic. I'm thinking about making courses and stuff that you can purchase or hire me to help you with. So if you'd be interested in that, please let me know below as well. Okay, let's jump into 10 traits that I don't have. Number one, I can understand sarcasm. This is very stereotypical. A lot of people think that, oh, you're autistic, you can't understand sarcasm. But in fact, I love sarcasm. I am super sarcastic myself. People who are sar sarcastic, I like want to be friends with them because I just think it's hilarious and I love being sarcastic myself. And the reason people think, you know, oh, autistic people can't understand sarcasm or they have trouble with it is because our brains tend to be very literal thinking. So if somebody's trying to make a sarcastic joke, we may perceive it as the truth, but that's not always the case because I perfectly understand sarcasm and I love love dishing out sarcasm. Trait number two that I don't have, I don't really stim a lot. And if I do, it's very subtle things that aren't like very typical stimming for people like, you know, fidgeting with things or flapping or like cracking knuckles and stuff like that. So the stims that I do do are face picking and nail picking. I never thought of this as a stim, but I think it actually might be because after, you know, a long day, I love to just go and it's a terrible habit. It, but I love to go just like pick out my face in the mirror. It's like super soothing. And that sounds really terrible and it is terrible, but um, I like cannot help myself. And the other thing that I do occasionally is tap my feet while I'm sitting down, but not just like tapping them, like literal tap dance moves, cause I used to tap dance. So I'll like go over like some tap moves or like um, a little set that used to be one of my dances. Um, I used to do that in school a lot. But other than those two things, I don't really, 
really stem and I don't do them that often. Trait number three that I don't have, and I don't even know if you can consider this a trait because it technically has nothing to do with you, but I'm gonna just count it anyway, so bear with me. I wasn't bullied in school. I have heard from so many autistic people, girl or boy, that they were very much bullied in school and that is so sad and so terrible and so not right. I was very, very fortunate to really never be bullied in school. I went to a Christian school from kindergarten through eighth grade and then a very small charter school for high school and I would bet a lot of money that most of the people that went to the, the charter school were also on the spectrum in some shape or form. So we were kind of all on the same level and maybe all kind of a little awkward. So very, very thankfully and I was very blessed that I was not bullied in school. Treat number four that I don't have. I don't have a monotone voice. This is another very stereotypical trait of autism when you think of you know Rain Man or something his voice is very monotone it never gets higher or lower and there's never excitement or anything in it but I definitely don't have this now I'm sure at sometimes I can have a monotone voice when I'm feeling down or tired or something but when I'm out with people or with family or friends and while making these videos, I'm very like upbeat and don't have a monotone voice. I especially don't have a monotone voice when I'm talking about something that I'm very passionate about or have strong opinions about, such as my special interests. So like when I was younger, when I talk about football, I get like really riled and like start talking louder and um, just get really intense in the conversation. Trait number five that I don't have is a lack of imagination. I have a huge imagination. Many times people think that autistic people People have no imagination. I think that maybe goes back to like our literal way of thinking that our brains work and you know the another stereotype that they're into numbers and stuff which I'll get to later um, but I have a huge imagination. I loved making up stories as a kid. I still love making up stories. I had imaginary friends and maybe still have some in my own little world. That's really embarrassing. One of my favorite things to do is write fiction stories, so literally making up stories. You know, my mom worked at a toy store for a lot of her life, and it was a specialty small mom and pop toy store, and they never had any like video games or stuff like that. It was all toys that sparked imagination, and so we were not allowed to have video games or computer games or phones growing up. We had to use our imagination, so I was really into horses, so I had, you know, like these giant horse setup that I would, you know, just completely go dive into being imaginative with my toys or like playing school or outside. It was always imaginative play and when friends would come over it was imaginative play and so yeah I definitely definitely don't have a lack of imagination. I probably have too much. Trait number six I don't have. I don't need a strict routine. Now I know a lot a lot of autistic people need a very strict routine. But for me, a really, really strict like set in stone routine makes me very, very anxious because all I'm thinking about is like, oh my gosh, I have to do this at this amount of time and there's no exceptions. I can't be late. I can't not do it. So having a very strict routine actually makes me more anxious. Now I do need it in some ways, however. So say somebody makes plans with me, once like that's a plan then changing or varying from it can cause me to get a little unregulated and maybe in serious cases have a meltdown or a shutdown so yeah once like a one specific thing is like in motion and it becomes my plan for the day then I very much like to stick to it but having an overall routine that I stick to every single day is definitely not something that is beneficial to me. Trait number seven that I don't have. I don't repeatedly organize things and line things up. I'm actually a little bit messy. It's like I want to not be messy but then I'm too lazy to like clean things up so I usually you know every once in a while like clean everything up and then wait a really long time till things get messy again and then put it back together. So that stereotype, typical like thought that autistic people like line things up and organize things over and over again is not something that I do. There are certain things that I like having in a certain place and if somebody moves them, I'm a little grumpy about it, but it's not an obsessive thing. Autistic trait number eight that I don't have. 
bad fine motor skills and being clumsy. I played sports through my whole entire life and I consider myself pretty dang coordinated. I can catch things. I have super duper fast reflexes, which and I'm not just like trying to like toot my own horn. Oh, I have fast reflexes. People have actually told me and like have been like, like, how did you, how did you do that? Like your reflexes are so fast. So I've been very blessed with fast reflexes. Again, um, I tapped as a kid and I still do now for fun. So, you know, my feet can like go a million miles a minute and very coordinated with that. I played soccer, I played football, so many things that I had to be coordinated with and fine motor skills. So like typing, writing, I'm all very, very good at those things as well. So definitely do not lack in those areas. Now I can sometimes be a little clumsy in the fact that I usually constantly have bruises on my legs that I have no idea how they got there. So perhaps I'm clumsy in that way, but overall I'm really not clumsy or bad at fine motor skills. Autistic trait number nine that I don't have. I am not obsessed with numbers and science and math. That's never been something that I have been interested in. Do I appreciate figuring out how things work and like why? Why? Absolutely, that's very autistic of my brain to figure out why we need answers. So yes, but I'm I'm not like very obsessed with those things. I I do really like cars, um, but other than that, any kind of like engineering or things like that don't interest me, and I'm not good at autistic trait number ten that I don't have. I don't really have trouble socializing. Now, when I was a kid, I hated socializing, and I still to an extent hate socializing now. And when I was a kid. I was very, very shy, even through, you know, high school, I was very shy, but I knew how to mask and put on an act. And now even I still mask, but when I'm in situations that are unfamiliar or new, I can still socialize quite fine. So, and this was actually the trait that because I didn't have, I thought I couldn't be autistic. I think I say it in my autism diagnosis journey video, which I'll link above, that I asked my friend who is a therapist if the traits were weighted because he said, oh, there's no way because you can socialize and you're fine with socializing. And I said, are they weighted? Because if I have all these other traits, but not that one, does that mean there's no, there's no chance? And he said, no, they're not weighted. If you had to have the trait of completely being unable to socialize, then that would be the only trait <laughs> that would mean you're autistic and all the other ones don't matter. So no, if you can socialize seemingly fine, that does not mean you're not autistic. Okay, so those are 10 autistic traits that I don't have and yet I am still officially diagnosed by a licensed doctor as an autistic person. So don't freak out if you don't have every single trait that other people have. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below or email me. Thank you for watching another one of my videos and for supporting me always. I'm so very thankful and blessed to have you all. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you all and I will see you soon.